When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Kroger worth it every time. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Trust me when I tell you two of the hottest topics out there are women's health and entrepreneurship. Join me, Abby Feeder, certified life and fertility coach, on my new podcast, The Fertility Chick, where I check the intersectionality of family building and career success for all the badass women out there. Grab it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome. And thank you for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. My name is Zach Brittle. I'm here with Laura Heck. Um, today, we're chatting about a whole bunch of things. Laura has some questions that she wants to get answered, and we dive right in. It's actually a pretty fun conversation. We also have a very big announcement next week, so um, you want to stay tuned for that episode. Um, in the meantime, we're still working on growing our Patreon base. Um, it is our way of trying to stay on the air and provide quality content for you. We have a couple of really cool um, behind-the-scenes style offerings for you that are going to kind of kick off really as the uh, school year starts. So if you're in back-to-school mode, um, add becoming a patron of marriage therapy radio to your list. Uh, for now, Laura and I are batting around some ideas. We're going into some reflection that's both personal and professional, which is always fun. This is a very cool conversation. Stick around. You have questions to ask me? Yeah. Okay. I want to know one, I think that there may be a possibility that you and I can swim in the same pool Saturday. There is a possibility. Okay. Tell me about that. Well, I'm going to be in your neck of the woods. Yeah. And I need to swim. Okay. And maybe you might want to take me to your pool and then we can sure. swim together. Wouldn't that yeah. be kind of fun? Yeah. Um, you need to swim like for exercise or you need to swim like for fun? Oh, for exercise. I have to train. It's not really for exercise. Ryan always tells me that I'm, I'm trying to be the best at exercise and I'm not. I'm just trying not to die on a triathlon. That's all. So that's one exciting thing. Is that yeah. um, I would really love to do some physical exercise on Saturday. So that's, that is one piece of the puzzle. The other question that I have for you is what do you do when you get overwhelmed? Because I am currently in a state of feeling super overwhelmed. I with- curl up in a ball and I lay on my couch and I usually turn on like a superhero show and then I try to fall asleep, even if it's the middle of the sunniest day of the year. But I'm just kidding. I mean, I do do that, but oh that's my not gosh. the answer you want I'm like, for. that would be amazing, but there's like quite literally like nothing, um, no time. Like I'm overwhelmed because I have too many things to do in too short of a time. And so what do you do when you get overwhelmed like that? What is your go-to? I, I mean, I control what I can control. So, um, and I have like Sabbath built in. So like Thursday is a really good day. Like I got up and actually, I've been up since seven or so and okay. I've gotten a ton done this morning like because is that I didn't... early for you seven or is yeah. that like I mean okay. uh if my first client's at nine I set my alarm for eight okay and then I get up and I spend an hour like kind of getting ready and going in but I don't like do anything I just I, I get up and I putz around and I take a shower and I unless I'm swimming in which case that's just an extra time but like but this morning I got up at seven for basically no reason I have to meet you till nine Right. And then I was like, just doing stuff. And I kind of just did what I could do, which is nice. Like you're just checking things off. Yeah. But that's built into my Thursday for sure. Okay. All right. Mm. But the the short answer to what I'm, what I'm saying is I control what I can't control when I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. I control what I can't control. Do you ever start, because there's one thing, like I'm looking at my calendar, I'm going, Laura, you're overwhelmed. You have too many things to do in too short of a time. And so I start like making a list because I'm thinking my head is a little swarmy. I feel like there's a lot going on. Maybe I need to like make a list so that I can see everything. And maybe once I write it all down and I can see everything, maybe that'll help me feel less overwhelmed. Sure. That's controlling what you control. Okay. Um, The other thing is I have like this unwritten rule that you can't start deleting stuff off of your list. Like a lot of people I know would say like, what can you dump? What can you say? Uh This doesn't need to be here. You can just get rid of this on your calendar, like plan it for another day. 
for whatever reason, I have this unwritten rule that I cannot get rid of anything. I was given a challenge and I just have to deal with the challenge as is. And, um, and it's interesting because my mother-in-law who, you know, and loves you, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm her um, favorite person. She, yes, exactly. I think. Actually, what is it? What is the inside joke there? She thinks I'm hilarious. Yes. Yeah. She thinks you're hilarious. Yeah. Okay. She will just start dumping stuff off of our calendar. Mm-hmm. She'll be like, I can't come to dinner. I'm not going to go to my, you know, physical therapy appointment. I <laughs> can't, you know, do this. And for whatever reason, that is not on the list of things that I can do. Mm-hmm. It's just a rule that I guess I have of like, you just have to deal. You just have to push through. But there's got to mm-hmm. be a better, a better way to make this go. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just currently feeling very overwhelmed, which is you know, I don't like being late, but I was late for this. And that's yeah. not, that's not a good way to start the day. Well, the, the other thing I think is like, actually part of it too, is like, I think when you're overwhelmed, which is easy to do these days, like you got to lean into gratitude. I don't mean that like in a cheesy way as much as to go, okay, hold on a second, slow mm-hmm. down. Mm-hmm. Can we just remember that? Like we have a roof over our heads and we live in a pretty great place and the sun is out and Mm-hmm. I've got, you know, I mean, like what just, it, it seems like kind of a remedial sometimes, but I always say the, the that remedial and remedy share the same route. And sometimes oh. when you're, when you're overwhelmed, you need to go, let's just go back to like basic fundamental gratitude about whatever, you know, yeah. because it's really hard to be grateful and angry at the same time I've found, but uh, I wonder if you can be grateful and overwhelmed at the same time. I don't know if I've really practiced it in that way, but. Um, yeah. I think you can be grateful. What I just like is that when when I get overwhelmed, it becomes so inwardly focused, very like me uh-huh. focus centric. Uh-huh. And usually I'm overwhelmed because I want to do something for somebody and I don't want to let somebody down. Uh-huh. And that's part of the reason why I tell myself you can't cancel because you're going to let somebody down. Uh-huh. You just got to deal with the way that it is. But it is a very like inward focused centric experience. And when you say gratitude, it literally is just like pulls me up, gives me a bigger perspective. It's not all about you. It's not all about like this moment in time, but you have a lot more to be grateful for. And that actually, the moment you said I was like, it kind of felt like a little bit of a breath air. Yeah. Fresh air. Hey, I want to ask you a question in a non snarky way, because I, I think it's, it's, there's insight here that may be valuable. Yeah. Um, you don't want to let anybody down. But if I ask you to do something like record an ad, you will let me down by forgetting. You True. won't let me down by scratching it off your calendar and like making right. it like and dumping it as though you don't care. Yeah. But there is a part of you that is that has access to letting people down or, and I'm doing that in air quotes. Yeah. By virtue of just forgetting or something. And yeah. how do you connect those two things? Like how do you cuz it's not the letting people down part that you're actually yeah. Troubled by. It's it's the mm. maybe the intentional or the willful. Yeah, it's a really great question. I compartmentalize um you and the podcast in a different way. Um But and- surely that's not unique, right? I mean, like things must fall off your radar from time to time. By way of ADHD or whatever. Well, this is what I mean, right? This is exactly what I'm asking about. Yeah. I'm not asking about me and I'm not asking about the podcast. I'm asking about like, what's the difference between the way you let people down, say as a function of your ADHD. Right. Versus this thing that you're describing, which is I don't want to make a willful choice to let people down. Gosh, I don't know. I guess what I'll go back to what I was saying, which is, and I'm I'm going to be perfectly honest in that it's a value. So in my mind, I am when I said like I need to write things down and categorize them. Part of what I'm doing is I'm like I'm trying to order the order of importance mm-hmm. and value. What are, what is the value? Mm-hmm. So in my mind, I'm thinking about doing a, and this is going to sound awful, but it, it is for whatever reason this is the the way that it is in my mind is like. Hey, can you do this? Read this ad for me. Part of it is that I've got a day to do the ad. And then in my mind, I also have, you have to go get a, a birthday present for our son's, you know, uh-huh. BFF. Uh-huh. In my head, I kind of like, I am I think more about the birthday present. Sure. And I don't know why. Huh. I don't know why it is, but I think that it has something to do with value. Like, I feel like we have like an innate 
maybe it's like a trust built up or I feel like maybe I have a little bit more flexibility with you or if I drop the ball, you're going to pick it up. But I don't, there's there's not like another mom that's going to drop and I don't. Okay, wanna, but what about know. like, do you do this with Ryan? Like, do you have the same, because of the trust and stuff that you have built up, do you sometimes drop things that he has asked you to do? Or that 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 becomes an, like an innate expectation? Mm, probably, but not often. I don't drop things very often. Yeah. I have a history of dropping things with you. Yeah, this is kind of interesting. Like you and I have this relationship where it evolved. Where before I felt like I was like pretty dang reliable, and mm -hmm. I had a lot of integrity, and I said what I did, and I did what I said. And now I'm especially when it comes to reading commercials. <laughs> yeah. it, it is our favorite thing because we do love to like shill for other companies to support us, which yeah. by the way, it's, really important. it's not our new strategy. Our new strategy is to subscribe yeah. by quality content through yeah. our Patreon subscription. <laughs> <Absolutely>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not making yeah. fun, but this is a, this is a, this is a moment that we're in and we're trying to figure out how to actually bring value in ways that, that actually meet people where they're at. And sometimes yeah. it's not ad reads, right? And I get that. And um, so. Yeah, I don't know. It is really interesting though. I do have some friends also. Um, and not to say that this is the case, because I think that you have always been pretty reliable and on the ball, aside from maybe like being on time. That's not always the case for you. <laughs> Says but the girl who was eight minutes late today. I was, but here's the thing. It's fair, it's fair. I was just yeah. explaining this to a client of like, how do you build trust with people that don't know you're trying to build trust? And I sure. said, when somebody says, hey, I'm going to, uh, I'm, you know, like you text them. They say, I'm on a call right now. I'll give you a call in 10 minutes. And then they return your phone call in 10 minutes. I want for you yeah. to like tally up. These are the ways in which people are, you know, showing up and they're saying they're going to do something. So to be fair, yes, I was late, but I also said, I'm going to be highly communicative. Yeah. I and tried it was totally really fine. hard to let yeah. you know that I was going to be late. Yeah. Um, I do have people in my life where if they have been flaky with me, it almost gives me permission to be flaky with them. I treat them the mm. way that I, so I'm not saying that you have been flaky with mm -hmm. me by any means, no. but I do find that I flake on you a lot more than I flake on other people. Well, and there's probably a measure of safety in that too, right? Like mm. that is um, like what the places that you can relax, you you can relax and maybe that's, <laughs> that's okay because you're not going to, because the consequences aren't that high and I'm not going to rip you a new one or fire you or like, you yeah. know, um, or vice versa. I mean, I get that part. So I think it's a curious inquiry. I think it's worth like batting around um, <laughs> because there's like, what I always say is there's information there. Like there's just information available to us when we, when we literally think like, why is that like this and not like that? That's interesting, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Um, I had a story that I want to share with you. And this is part of like, I had questions for you. Yeah. I've been, I've been doing, uh, yeah, I think I've been leaning a little bit more into using my body in session um, mm -hmm. and paying attention uh -huh. to my body and paying uh -huh. attention to how I'm feeling to be uh -huh. able to reflect and see how I might be perceiving my clients because I find that like there's a lot of poker faces. And um, so yesterday I had an overwhelming emotional experience and I wouldn't say overwhelming because I actually was able to contain it. But I would just say that like I don't normally cry in session, mm. but I, I like openly cried and really tried to hold it together. Mm. But I was doing something quite powerful in that I was intentionally tuning into my body. Mm. And what happened was I invited the emotions to come out with it. And mm. so um, I was working individually. This was kind of fun. Individually with one of my clients and, um, and we're working on some trauma and uh, trauma from his job. He is, I'll just like in general, just say he's a first responder Ugh. and there have been some, and I will, uh, I have to, ca I have to like caveat this is that he has tried to find a therapist that works for him. That's going to be the best fit for him. And he just has, hasn't been able to connect. And so when somebody says, Laura, I haven't been able to connect with another therapist, but I connect with you. I trust mm -hmm. you and mm -hmm. I want to work with you. I'm not going to turn that person down because mm -hmm. they do think that though I don't have this history and background as an individual therapist, I still think that that trusting relationship can carry you through doing really solid work with another person, even if I, I don't think I'm the best, most qualified human being to do that. 
So anyway, I'm working with him and we're processing um, a traumatic experience that he had on the job that uh-huh. continues to kind of carry uh, with him. Uh-huh. And so I ran him through um, imagery and it was really lovely, quite beautiful, but I had him sort of describe, we both closed our eyes. I said, I want you to just describe a moment in so that I can also carry it in my, in my mind. Huh. And then, um, and then I felt my body, I was paying a really close attention. I was describing what was going on. I said, here's what I'm feeling, feeling a lot of tension. And, um, here's how I want to reprocess this. I want you to imagine, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I, I it was like an ugly cry because Oof. I'm trying to talk him through, but I'm also feeling all this emotion. Yeah. And it was a really cool experience, but wow, is that draining as a uh-huh. therapist. I got done and I was like energized and exhausted at the same time of being able to use my body in session in a way to give me information about not only him, but about the experience that he went through and then trying to introduce new emotion and new thoughts into this traumatic experience. But I I left that experience thinking, holy cow, to be like a trauma worker or someone mm-hmm. that is helping others process, mm-hmm. that must be really exhausting. Mm-hmm. And I understand boundaries, but I also think as a therapist, sometimes we have to be very, um, we have to let our boundaries down enough to be able to feel with our clients in a mm-hmm. way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, as I'm listening to you, I'm like, that sounds terrifying to me. I could, there's no way I could pull that off. Really? Well, I, I bet just, you could. I don't want to. I mean, I, I, I like, I like couples work because it's systems work and I can it's sort so of bail boundaried. out of the, the, like the, the, the intense traumatic moment from time to time. And, and I, you know, I, this is the thing I tell people all the time. I'm not your best bet when it comes to individual work. Cause I, I, I resist the thing that you're describing, which is yeah. being like fully present with yeah. the, with that moment is impressive. And yeah, people who do that every day, people talk to me, they say, oh, it must be so hard what you do. Right. You know, and I'm As like, a couple well, therapist. it's not really. Cause I mean, I'm not doing the thing that you're describing, which is totally. deeply feeling with right. another person. Yeah. You know, I did 10 and a half hours yesterday of therapy and I, was, I came home and I was like, let's go. What do you want to do? You know, because, mm-hmm. but if I'd done 10 and a half hours of what you just described, Totally. I, I would have crawled up in a fetal position on the couch and watched a superhero show and tried to fall asleep as fast as possible. Yeah. I, it just makes me think about, uh, like, I was feeling at the same time as he was feeling. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, we dipped into it for about 20 minutes and then we came out of it. And when I when we were done, I had so much appreciation for what he was doing in in session with me of being like, wow. That was hard work. And mm. I'm so appreciative of your ability to trust me to take mm. you there to mm-hmm. and that you like followed me into it. Mm-hmm. But and the and I will say, like, you know, if you're a therapist and you're listening to this, you're like, Laura, what the hell are you doing? You're not a trauma worker. I'm not. But I know that I can contain a safe space. I mm-hmm. know that I can lead by example. I know that I was modeling um like what it's like to experience emotion when it comes out and just mm-hmm. be, have it be okay to experience that emotion. Um, and so, yeah, I just, w- I had a lot of appreciation for him. And then I, you know, in the same way, like, do you ever get exhausted by going to therapy and working with your therapist? Yes. I have an appointment today that I am like, not, I do not want to go to because I know it's going to be exhausting and I'm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's, it just gave me a lot of appreciation for um, my clients. And I know that they're already exhausted. By the time they're sitting in my office, they are exhausted in their well, you relationship. Know what, you know what I think about sometimes that I that I have to remember? Like I did 10 and a half hours yesterday. I don't know how many couples I had, maybe seven. But um, to me, it's like, yeah, I, I mean, I just rattled those numbers off, right? But for each one of those couples, it was the biggest hour of their week. Right. 100%. It's like the most important thing they did all week, the most expensive thing they did all week, the most yeah. consequential thing they did all week. So <laughs> even just staying like really attuned to that for them is, I don't want to call it work. That's actually just responsibility, but it is it is part of the, the gig um, because yeah, it's, it is w- what people are doing when they are really being thoughtful about their relational stances is exhausting for sure. Yeah. My clients have just been on fire. I... 
it has been probably the the toughest two weeks in a long, long time mm. where every couple that I've had has basically just been like, Laura, this is the worst we have ever felt. Mm. <laughs> um, and it's hard as a therapist, just like from my point of view, it's, it's hard to not get down on yourself and be like, what am I doing? Like, how am I impacting these couples? And the other thing is, it's really interesting is like, I know that there is an ebb and a flow. And for whatever reason, like all of my couples are down. Sometimes I just want to say like, be patient Mm -hmm. and do what you can do kind of in this moment. Like when I said, Zach, I am overwhelmed in this moment. Mm -hmm. What can I do to help myself feel less overwhelmed? It's like when my couples are on fire, I'm, my instinct is to be like, stop, stop everything. Slow down. Slow everything thing down yeah and tend to yourself go inside and just yeah. do what you need to do to make yourself feel better if that means going on a solo road trip by yourself to be able to just self-soothe slow down put a pause um that i think is going to be the most helpful piece and so i've been doing a lot of individual work of basically uh-huh. saying we're not doing couples work right now uh-huh. it is overwhelming <clears throat> and i'm not going to continue to just bring the two of you together and have it be more fire on fire, let's do some over, like some work on just slowing everything down with you as an individual Uh and have you turn inward and decide what can I do to help myself feel better right now. Uh Uh And, um, and if you can ride that wave, oftentimes relationships will correct. It just, it's about patience Uh and just knowing that this is, this is the ebb and the flow of, of this relationship. Uh No, I'm pro that you know that I have a very, very strong bias for taking care of your own shit, like taking care of your side of the street in yeah. terms of like um, the way you show up relationally. And I don't, and that doesn't strictly mean don't do your negative stuff, but if you're overwhelmed and you need to recharge or soothe, then by all means, like don't try to do really hard relational work when you, when you are caught up in the overwhelm or caught up in the chaos. And mm. that's, uh, people aren't used to it. They're not used to taking care of themselves, you know, just as you described, you're so worried about other people or letting other people right? down yeah. that you don't, you forget sometimes that the best way you can not let people down is if I take care of your, your stuff. Mm-hmm. But an interesting lesson to learn. I was just talking yesterday to, to one of these couples and, um, you know, we, we kind of stumbled onto this slow down theme and I want to offer it here because, you know, while it is important to take, um, you know, a moment to take care of yourself, like this other side is relevant. And and I learned it was relevant because the couple themselves were like, oh my gosh, that is profound. That's going to change everything for us. And it was basically, very specifically, they were, they were a blended family couple with older children. One of the youngest of the oldest children is 17, still lives in the house. They were coming over to see me for the first time. And they were, they got in a fight about whether or not to tell the 17 year old what they were doing. Are we, or should we tell, like, oh, no, I don't want to tell her because I don't want her to worry. Oh, I would tell her because it's a good idea, you know? And they just started to, and they got, like, immediately, they got into the, the, who's right, who's wrong, why wouldn't you tell her, why wouldn't you tell her, are you a good person, are you a liar, you know, like, I'm not going to lie to her. Well, I'm not talking about being a liar. I mean, it just spun, like, it spun out, like, so right. quickly. Yeah. Um. And I was like, just imagine, though, if, if you guys had uh, an awareness of what was happening, and you you realize like I'm not going to tell her why, and you and you uh, you know instead of going well because I did da 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 da, you just slowed it down. Sure. You just slowed down and said, "Well, hold on, I'm not sure I understand your question. Um, are you saying why the hell wouldn't you tell her? Or are you saying, sweet girl, I don't understand your th- philosophy there. Why don't you let me know more about it? You know, like yes. because in the chaos you." we often will hear the first one and maybe the second one is the one that's being, regardless, if you slow down and you just go, what is the thing we both want here? Yeah. We both want to raise an emotionally intelligent kid who's not freaked out about the fact that our kid, our parents are in yeah. therapy. Okay. Yeah. Well, we might disagree about how to do that, but we're not in, if we slow down long enough to, to realize that like we actually do agree about we're looking out for what's best for this kid. Yeah. Then, you can kind of let the the whoosh pass over you and go. I love okay. hearing you use your RLT language. Well, I didn't even mean to, but like I, I I got in trouble the other day because 
this is a totally different, a little bit of a different sidebar, but um, because I was counseling a, a, a client to like put her shoulders back and strengthen her spine and like go into battle. And she was like, you know, where I come from, that's really like traumatic language, like the idea of war and battle and all that stuff. Like it's not helpful. Yeah. Like it's little, yeah. little. And I was like, okay, fair. Got you. hundred percent understand. Imagine though you were walking into the ocean. Like you can, you, you can be flimsy get and, over and like, by a ways. yeah, like strengthen your spine, put your shoulders back, plant your feet. Yeah. Let the wave hit you because you still have to walk through the ocean. So it is a, it's a literal metaphor about how you, you know, gird yourself for the thing that's coming. So a little bit yeah. off, off of the thing, but yeah, but if you, if you're getting caught up either in your own personal overwhelm or in the moment, the relational overwhelm with one another, yeah, I think you do have to plant your feet, but not defiantly mm. as much as securely. Yeah. And then, um, you know, let it, let that moment pass so that there's a calm that, so there's enough calm for you to go, wait, what am I, should I go back to the beach or should I keep walking into the ocean? Do I want to do this or, do, you know? Yeah. I, I do want to ask this question because we are relational therapists and I, and not individual therapists. And there is a concept that I'm getting a little pushback from clients. And I think there's also two schools of thought, which hmm. is what we haven't yet said is turn towards your partner. That is your anchor that you feel is a very soothing individual in your life, that is someone that you are securely attached to, grab hold of them and seek comfort in them. We haven't said that. Mm. What we have said is grab hold of yourself, Mm -hmm. plant your feet in the sand and get ready to take on that, that whoosh, that, you know, ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm wondering what you think about that because there are two schools of thought. Like when we teach, Gottman method, when we're teaching couples how to self-soothe, it's soothe yourself and and be soothing to your partner. There's two elements to it. And we haven't said that yet. And I do find that uh, I'm more instructing people to be competent in their own self-management than to turn toward their partner as someone that can help to soothe them when they're feeling the overwhelm. Like, who can you reach for that can help ground you? We haven't said that. Well, I mean, part of why we don't say it is because I think, you know, people who are listening to this podcast typically are listening to it because it's their partner that's agitating them. Right. You know, it's yeah. not their partner that is soothing them, you know, and there's right. this whole, um, you know, are you going to be aware enough to be able to soothe or cling to, like, are you going to be stable enough, you know? And I think that's mm-hmm. where you got to slow down and go, wait, there's something we both want here. And I, you know, I, I do think there's always something you both want, you know, even if it's to avoid misery, you know, it might be to stay married. It might be to enjoy our dinner. This, another couple was talking to us about how they were fighting in the car on the way to a party because they didn't know how to tell the lady they were going to be late. And I was like, but didn't you both want to enjoy the party when you got there? Okay. They're like, yeah. And I was like, if either one of you at any point had said, Hey, you know what, what we know for sure is that we both want to enjoy this party when you get here. So I don't really feel like I need to text her and tell her we're going to be late, but you do. How about we play rock, paper, scissors? Da, 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 da. Okay. And then now we're clinging to each other. We've, we've appealed to a higher power. We've said our, our shared goal is more important than our individual baloney that we have. Yeah. You know, and it does take, I mean, I just don't think there's any cost to slowing down, you know, <laughs> and going, hmm, <laughs> how do I put some thoughtfulness in here? And when can couples I, can learn that to do, to do that for each other, that's amazing. Yeah. I want to talk about like the practicality of actually slowing down. Like what does okay. it look like when each person is trying to be heard, trying to feel understood. And so they're talking at each other and it's opposing point of views and they're just bup, 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 going at it. The practicality of like actually like if they hear Zach's words in their head saying slow down Uh do you think that it makes sense for them to actually go i am going to slow down and it literally slows the pace of conversation down enough for them to say now what is it that we both want what is this higher power that we're seeking yeah i'm thinking about when i was when i was in uh 
college and learning to become a teacher. <laughs> they tell you how to do all the stuff before you ever get in the classroom. So <laughs> like you don't know how to do it, right? But but the, if your classroom is rowdy and they're, they're throwing paper planes and they're all over the place and then you, and you know you, you could be like, stop throwing the planes. Yeah. Or you could stand in the front of the room and be like, <clears throat> all right, so hey, we're going to turn to page 65 in our books and I want you to um, yeah. get your pens out and then let's make sure that we have, you know, and it forces them to be like, wait, what's happening right now? And, you know, <laughs> I, it didn't, it, I wasn't very good at this strategy, which is why I bailed out <laughs> as a teacher after like a year and a half. But um. But I do think that there is something to, you know, leading through calmness, right? Mm. So I, I, the part the part about what you're describing is there's a there's a version of it that sounds really condescending. Mm-hmm. I am going to, or how about we slow it down? Or why it don't you? It is completely calm condescending. Down. I'm better than you because you know, you're losing. But if you do, just sort of go. I'm in control. Yeah. Or but if you're like, hey, you know, uh, blah, blah 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 blah. Yeah. You know what? You know. Yeah, there. You know what? You might be right. And I mean, it's maybe that's maybe it's more in the line of like the accepting influence part. But um, mm. but I think that there is like practically sure. Lower your voice. I I have said it a ton of times on the podcast. Like, just say, uh, you know what? I gotta go to the bathroom. Sorry, I have got to pee. Go splash yeah. some water in your face. Like, bring your actual heart rate down. Yeah. You know, or code together that we like. My favorite repair, again, I've said it a million times. My favorite repair is, ah, ah, I'm banging my hand on my head. Ah, we're yeah, doing yeah, it again. Yeah. We're doing that tummy. thing that we always do that is unproductive totally. and unhelpful, yeah. um, which means we're not actually here. We're not actually present. Why don't we just take a quick break, you know, or whatever. What did Terry and Belinda say the other day? They were like, um, hey, do you want to fight? Like, they'll take it, like, they'll go to the bathroom, come back. Uh, I don't really want to fight. Do you want to fight? No, you I don't still want to really fight. fight? No. You want to you really waste an hour of our lives yeah. just talking at each other and getting angry? Yeah. Why don't we just go read a book on the deck? You know, okay. like yeah. Um, I was I was telling this again. <laughs> I was on. I was probably on fire yesterday, actually. Um, but I said, you know, most, almost everything you're arguing about is not important. Almost everything is is really not the issue. You know, so you got to slow down and check in with what the issue is. Yeah. I don't feel like a good person. I feel like mm-hmm. you don't trust me. I feel mm-hmm. like this is never going to change. You know, those are important conversations that you must have quietly, yeah. you know? Yeah. I have couples. Um, I mean, I imagine like these, these, not a lot of couples are going to come into a conversation the way we teach them, which is, okay, everybody, we've got a problem that we're going to solve. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what the problem is. And then we're going to figure out, okay, now let's go ahead and draw our circles. Like that doesn't happen. What happens is you spiral out. You're both frustrated with each other. You've offered a few repairs. The, and then all of a sudden you remember Zach saying, slow down. And then this is the point where I would say things like, hey, what are we really talking about right now? Like, I'm pretty sure there's a couple conversations happening at the same time and that's chaotic. But what is like at the core essence of what is it that we're really talking about? Is there a problem that we can both zero in on? And then what do we both want? What's yeah. the goal? What yeah. are we hoping to accomplish? What's really important for me to know about your position at this very moment? Like, what is that? So, I mean, I guess the slowing down part would be just sort of, uh, boy, we keep circling around this idea mm-hmm. of just like ground your feet and figure out, like, get your bearings mm-hmm. for a second. Mm-hmm. Where are well, you? What are you hoping what to you accomplish? Can control. Mm-hmm. Put your feet on the ground. Yeah. Look around. Look look for what you can be grateful for, you know? And yeah. trust that this partner that you're with, I mean, again, how many conversations go better? I mean, conversations always go better if you're like, this is my chosen partner that loves me and that is sharing life with me and that wants this wants to raise a great family with me and that wants yeah. to st- like I chose this person. And there's a lot more there's a lot of good here. Maybe not a lot more good than bad, but like you lean into gratitude for a second long enough to go, okay, what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Hey, speaking of leaning into gratitude, what are like the top two things right now? Like today, Zach Brittle on, this is a Thursday at 9.45 AM. What do you have gratitude for right now? Um, uh, I got to listen to some really cool music this morning. I listened to a podcast about beds believe it or not okay um 
I I think what what that represents for me is that for about an hour and a half this morning, I was not hurried. I was not, and I I was listening to things for pleasure. Yeah, I was just able to kind of like knock a couple of pens off. We have our Iron Chef party coming up here in a couple of weeks. Oh, fun! So what are you out. making? We haven't decided on the final ingredient yet, but I think it's going to be citrus. Okay. Like. Do you know what you can do with citrus? Are you making the dessert? Because remember we had that episode and we learned how to make the lemon bun oh, cake. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I, literally I just thinking I don't have dessert this time. Oh, nuts. But, um, but yeah, I just got to do a lot of things for pleasure. This afternoon I get to go to therapy, which I don't really want to do, but I'm always glad that I do that. And I'm having lunch yeah. with a an old good friend who's about to move out of Seattle. So I have a lot of – Thursdays are a good day because I and the sun is shining. Um. Good. Yeah. So lots of gratitude. That's a couple things that are kind of on my mind. I've really decided like there are enough people in my life who are kind of Debbie Downers. Uh, <laughs> and I've just sort of decided that they don't get to like ruin, ruin my, ruin my day. Yeah. Um, and so I'm just, I, I don't know. It was fun to kind of claim that for myself and then listen to If you want to listen to a song that'll just kind of delight you. I do. Uh, it's a, it's go go dial up on Spotify. I'm from New Jersey by John Gorka. Okay. It's just a like it's a song that like you can't sort of help but enjoy, especially if you're from New Jersey or Ohio or Texas. <laughs> Why those three? Does he mention those? You gotta listen to well? the song. Okay, and you'll find okay, out. I'm yeah. gonna listen to it. You need to ask me what I have gratitude yeah, what, for. What about you? I was about to say, oh, what about you? Oh my gosh, your... thank you so much yeah. for asking. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. I'm having gratitude that um, I've been waking up and my legs have been sore. And That's I, cool. yeah, I really love the feeling of soreness. It's just such, for me, it's such a great reminder that I'm using my body the way that I think it's intended to be used, which is to be worked and to be yeah. used. So that's really neat. I've been running um, more consistent. I've been using this app. I just have to say, if you're a runner, I'm, I'm totally pumped on this. This is not an ad read. Um, I've been using this app called Runna, and uh-huh. it was given to uh, me and then my teammates for running the New York uh, Marathon for free. It was kind of part of our yeah. um, subscription, I guess. And it, it's really great. But yeah, I've been running consistently shorter distances, but um, following you know the instructions of how to run with this app. So that's one. Um, I enjoy the body soreness. What is another thing I have gratitude for? Hmm. I've been pretty grateful, even though my house is like a disaster zone, which is part of the reason I'm feeling overwhelmed, Mm -hmm. of having it look and feel the way I want to feel. So just being in my house after being out of it for nine months during the remodel, it feels really lovely to be in in the house. So, yeah. All right. Let's land this plane. Uh Um, I do want to say, hold on, you mentioned citrus and Uh I'm going to include this in Patreon because I want to do a little bit of a longer thing. Uh Um, If you follow us on Instagram, there was a few photos that got posted recently where I had my moms come over, uh, my mother-in-law and my mom. Uh And the thing is, they're both single women and they're Uh in their 70s and 60s and they don't want to cook for themselves. So I took it upon myself to say, great, come over to my house and once a week we're going to ba- do like a big batch of food mm. and then we'll distribute it so that you can eat off of it. And so we made orange chicken, which is a citrus ingredient. Yeah, it is. yeah. So orange chicken, pot stickers, and then pork fried rice. And We, we made, made orange chicken last night, except it was from Trader Joe's. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. You can either buy it from Trader Joe's or there's a big bag at Costco. Yeah. Both of them are crap compared to my homemade orange chicken, okay. FYI. Just saying. So we are uh, hoping to be sponsored by the app called Runna, but we will not be sponsored by Trader Joe's or Costco, who we just called their food crap. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, it's not. It's not crap. I love Trader Joe's. I'm actually going pretty soon. We're going to make Sloppy Joe's tonight. But right on. Um, hold on. There was one more thing I was going to say. Nope, I'm done. I'm done. That's well, it. Well, um, yes, let's land this plane. I will say, because we kind of need to continue to say <clears throat> that uh, our new sponsorship strategy is sponsored by you through our Patreon page. <laughs> <laughs> our new sponsorship strategy is you. If you is have you. not uh, uh, become a member, know. we do need you to roll over to marriagetherapyradio.com and check out the options at Patreon and become a supporter so that we can stay on the air and keep bringing you cool content, uh, which is our goal. 
And um, yeah, let's talk uh, when we hang up about uh, how you can come to the pool this weekend. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Okay. All right. Adios. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Marriage Therapy Radio. Um, I mentioned an app, which I'm enjoying. So if you also want to enjoy it, it's called Runna. It's R-U-N-N-A. Um, and that will help you train for specific events. Just gives you, um, yeah, like intervals to run, paces to run. It's just a, a really cool way to do that. Um, the other item to talk about is just having you check out our Patreon page. So we're putting exclusive content on there as well as interviews. Zach had mentioned an interview that we did with Terry Real and his wife Belinda. It was amazing, but that's something only our Patreon listeners can hear. So if you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, you can go to our website, marriagetherapyradio.com, and you'll see the tab there. And you can just check out the different tiers of what you can join, whether it be, you know, $5 a month or $13 a month. Um, Check it out. Thanks for all of your time and attention, making your relationship better today than it was yesterday. Mm